Well, welcome back. It's Tim Ostendorf again to talk more about Joan Sutherland. Tim Ostendorf, innkeeper, bartender, baritone, uh, owner of the Inn at Crystal Lake, innatcrystallake.com. Um, I did a video earlier um, about, of course, Joan Sutherland, my favorite soprano, um, an aria from Ivespri Siciliani. Um, now I'd like to do, um, I'm, I'm kind of getting into these comparisons, which are kind of fun. Um, and so I'm going to do a song instead of an aria tonight um, for the second time tonight. Oh, because because it's the second time tonight, and I'm wearing the same shirt, but I've accessorized with a little scarf. Um, what do you think? I think it's got a good combo. Actually, uh, my partner Bobby just had his birthday the other day. Happy birthday, Bobby! And he got this, oops, he got it from his mother, and I thought it was a nice little compliment. Kind of basically the same pattern, but a little larger and black. For and I've refreshed my drink. It's, um, it's still Waterford, though. Gotta love the Waterford, huh? <clears throat> Anyway, this is a song, um, sorry, back again to this, from an album from 1972 called Songs My Mother Taught Me. That's Richard Bonning, her husband, and um, Joan Sutherland. And he plays piano on some of it and then conducts any of the orchestral numbers. Um, this is a song very popular um, by Leo Delib, um, who wrote uh, Lachme, which has the very famous uh, bell song. And I'm going to compare that with um, with, uh, with Adida Gruberova. Um, I've mentioned her before, my other favorite soprano. Oh, there it is, from an album called Kunst der Coloratur, or The Art of the Coloratur, Coloratur Soprano, and the Coloratur, you know, all the fast notes and trills and all things like that. Um, and actually, my favorite, uh, she, Adida, was my first love of the Coloratura, uh, introduced to me by a uh, good friend, uh, Michael Richard. Um, hey, Michael, how you doing? Um, and uh, and it was actually Lachme's bell song that first turned me on to the, the joys of the Coloratura soprano or the Leggero soprano or whatever you want to call it. Lots of high notes and lots of fast notes. Um, and so I'm going to read the translation, The Girls from Cadiz, La Fille de Cadiz by Leo Delib. Um, and it's more of a... Um, I don't know, what do, you, what do you want to call it? Like a, a, a mood piece. Um, the text is kind of funny. It's it, it kind of hard to translate when you hear the translation um, because it's more of like this seductive um, sort of feel. Um, so uh, the girls from Cadiz. Uh, we, and it's got the Spanish feel, of course. Castanets and all that. We had just seen the bull. What do they mean by that? Three boys, three girls. On the lawn it was sunny and we were dancing a bolero at the sound of the castanets. Tell me this morning if I look well, do you think my waist is slim? The girls of Cadiz tend to love that. And we were dancing a bolero one Sunday evening. A hidalgo came to us. A hidalgo came to us dressed in gold with a feather on his hat. And on his fist... Uh, on his, with his fist on his hip and if you want, he said, this gold is yours. Fair sir, go away, fair sir. The girls of Cadiz don't understand that. Ah, ah. Uh, and we were dancing a bolero down the hill. On the way went Diego, who counts just a coat for his possessions and a mandolin, the fair soft-eyed lady. I am jealous. Jaloux, jealous. Jaloux, jaloux, jealous. What a folly. The girls of Cadiz fear this flaw. And so Joan Sutherland from 1972 singing The Girls of Cadiz. <laughs> And so she's got a, a much, I think, rounder sound um, than she did from some of the earlier recordings we played over the past uh, month or so, and the two or three people that are following me. Um, 
actually, I think there's a few more. It's kind of crazy. Um, so uh, it's a much rounder sound, but kind of uh, for this song in particular, very sensual and very warm and womanly, for lack of a better term. Um, and um, I, I just love the the feel of it. And, and uh, Delib has co uh, kind of like Bizet with Carmen. They were both French composers, but had this very um, Spanish feel. They could ver invoke that Spanish feel very easily. So I, I think it's wonderful that you get that sort of, well, of course, the castanets help. Hello, who doesn't love a good castanet? Um, all right, back to the song. There's that wonderful trill again. French is terrible anyway, but I don't think her diction's that bad. I could be wrong, um, but um, maybe by 1972 she'd been uh, criticized a lot about her mushy diction, and so she's kind of cleaned it up a little bit, and I, 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 I can understand a lot of the words. I don't know about you, but I can. Remember the ending of this, because then when you hear Adidas version, uh, it's just a little different, and I'll explain why when we hear that. And so she does that wonderful bit right before the, a uh, little bit before that final note, where she just kind of swoops up to, to a high note, and uh, it's similar to how Adidas ends hers, but uh, definitely a little different. And you'll understand why when you hear that, if I can get to the right track and make sure uh, everything's on time and all of that, because you heard from my last video how, you know, I got to figure out exactly how I can get this under 15 minutes until I can figure out how to make them longer. But that's another whole topic. So anyway, here we have Adita Kubrova, wonderful Slovakian soprano, um, who's still singing. She was born in 46, so you do the math. It's pretty impressive that she's still singing. And like, we're talking big roles like Norma and things like that. Um, but here we have, and I love the beginning. It's very fast and wonderful, and then it slows right down to the seductive first verse. <laughs> Sur la pelouse, il fait sa voix, la 
I love how she plays with the words. And some people uh, have criticized her for she, she, and I admit it, she kind of swoops up into high notes a lot. Uh, but I just love the way that she works with this. And I granted this was also from 1983, so this was quite a while ago. But um, this, once again, she was my, my first love. She won't be my last love. I don't know what that song is. I don't know what I was trying to do with that. But anyway, here, back to Redita. She's got a good trill, I think. It's not as tight as Sutherland, but uh, I think it's pretty nice. Sorry, I got distracted by my pooch, um, and I was checking some other CDs to see how many comparisons I could do of my th three of my favorites, uh, Gruberova, Sills, and Sutherland, um, and that was Monty. You've met him before, I think, but anyway, we're coming up to the end, and she does this amazing thing, and she swoops up to some note. It's just great. It's like her voice. She just opens up her mouth and just lets it keep going, so it's very different from the way Joan Sutherland ended, so here we go, the ending of Adida Gruberova singing a la fille de Cadiz. Cadiz. Ended it with an X. It ends with an X in French, but that's not how it's pronounced, I guess. But anyway, here you go. <laughs> It just she just like opens up the mouth and just lets it keep going and you can just hear it like it just uh ooh, sorry for the shriek anyway um thanks again for indulging me in some comparisons it's my latest thing i think it's a lot of fun and uh, more talk on joan sutherland at another time from tim ostendorf innkeeper baritone bartender lover of joan sutherland and all things sopranoistic uh have a good night thank you take care ooh, gotta click off good night